Hello everybody and welcome to You Can Fix It. I'm Thomas Stamps. One of the major concerns for an awful lot of people these days is security. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How you can install deadbolt locks on your home for more added security and protection. And Jordan Johnson's going to show us how you can do it. How you doing, Thomas? Fine. Good. Okay, Jordan, now this is something that a uh, whole project that virtually everybody watching can tackle and be pretty successful at, right? You sure can. It's not a bad job at all. There's a couple of different types of locks and a couple of reasons you'd use the particular one I have tonight. Uh, we have a deadbolt keyed lock tonight, keyed from both sides, and the reason for that is it's a glass door and somebody can break in the glass. If you had the type where you could turn with your thumb. Well, if you had a thumb type, right. they could break in the glass and just turn the lock any way they wanted to. So what we're really interested in now is making sure that we have uh, not only a deadbolt lock, but one that is very safe. Oh, definitely. Now, when you're looking for a deadbolt lock, what you want to look for is something that the, the lock itself, and we'll demonstrate as we place it on the door, that will extend into the door jamb at least one inch. The steel bolt itself should actually extend into the door jamb about an inch. And you going to try it with a screwdriver, Thomas? Well, I'll try it here with the, uh, with the key here. Right. This is what we're talking about, is when, when it is locked, that this bolt slides out at least an inch into the door jamb, into the receiver. Exactly. Right. Okay. The reason for that, Thomas says, and what they're finding, uh, professional burglars, if you will, when they come to a door, they'll look for something that does not have you know, these types of things, for instance. If it does not have or it has a, a, a relatively weak lock on it, they can take a, a jack, a hydraulic jack, and just pry the um, door jams apart wide enough that they can just kick the door on in. And that's normally what they'll do. Or with a smaller lock, they just kick the door in anyway. This will give you enough security that, that, that it makes it very difficult. Your jam usually won't give a full inch. Right. So. That's the reason for that that much into the door jam itself. Well, Jordy, I think one positive note is the fact that homeowners are being more and more aware of what's happening out there and how they can protect themselves really very easily and inexpensively. It is, Thomas, and this is one of the primary ways. We may show on a, another show how to protect your windows, but for your doors, for entrance into your doors, the deadbolt's your most secure measure. Right. Okay, how do we start now? <laughs> now, we've already taken the door down, as you can see. We've taken off the regular doorknob here. Uh, we don't want to put it at the regular doorknob. We either want to put it below or above. Usually above would be a better deal because it's easier access. Uh, they're not real bulky looking things. They fit very nicely with your regular doorknob. You can get them to fit your different colors. So it'd be better to come up 0, 06, 8 inches above your, your present door knob um, unless the window does not, the light, as these panes are called, right. does not allow enough room for your piece to go in. Usually there is enough room, though, Thomas. But, well, Jordan, how do, we, how do we know where to put it? How do we, uh, how do we make that judgment? <laughs> well, we just drill a hole about here. And, <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, the uh, manufacturer usually will send to you a, a template, what's called a template. And that template will indicate where you not mark the, uh, the hole for your lock, your cylinder to go through, and where to knock the lock for that plunger, if you will, to go. So you'll have a, a mark. This template will indicate where to cut the round hole out here and to cut the hole in the front part. Now, I notice on here there are two different templates uh, put here. One says for a 2 and 3 eighths inch back set, and the other says for a 2 and 3 quarter inch back set. What does that mean? Okay, all they're talking about there is the width of your door. And to measure that, if we could turn this just slightly. Right. Now, they're talking about this distance, Thomas, right here, right across the face of the door. And you'd measure, to determine which back set you'd use, you'd measure, you may want to, all the way across from one edge to the other. And what do we've got there, Thomas? Inch and three quarters? Right, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, how do, how do we solve that mystery? <laughs> if you note the inch and three quarters door, has a place on the template. It tells you inch and three quarters. Right. That means this hole will not be, it'll, because of this wider width here, this hole will not be as far around as a door that's thinner. Right. So you would use the, this back set right, well it would be, two and three quarters. Right. 
For the inch and three quarters, you would use the two and three quarters. And this is the one right here on this, this side. Exactly. Right. Now, to, to set it up, the reason for this is this determines the distance. Now, we can put the door back. Put the door back, yeah. The distance from the front of this door to here is determined, the amount that you need is determined by that lock, that keeper that we were just showing you. Right. Not the keeper, but the actual plunger. To use the template, there's a dotted line. You fold it along that dotted line, place it on the door where you're going to put your lock, and let's put it about there, Thomas. Hold it in place. So now, the guide for drilling is really already set for you. It's already in there. Now the next step, and if you'll note, if you're ever not sure about what you're going to do, you can go down to where your other hole is, usually, and take and hold your template up and determine which one of these rings that's the best. Is the appropriate one. Right. right. So in this case, it's this one right here. And you'll simply mark your hole. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. I did it with a pencil. You can also do it, Thomas, with a finishing nail and just take a hammer. Thank you. It gives you your start. Okay. So actually, that's the point we drill now. Right, well, you've got more to do. <laughs> One more step, and I'm just gonna stoop down here because make sure you line it back up on that hole or you have it lined on that hole. Now, what you're gonna need to do is turn the door slightly again, and once you've marked that place, there's another position on the front side that also has to be marked. Right. Because you're gonna have to drill two holes. And again, it's the inch and three quarter door, so you have to put it on the center of the inch and three quarter indicator. Indicator. Right. Right there. Now, if it was inch and three eighths door, of course, you would do it on the inch and three eighths indicator. Just like okay, that. Okay, so now we have two, two holes. Small holes there indicating where we're going to drill. This is because not only we need to put the lock in here, the bolt has to have a place to come exactly. out. Exactly. Right. Let's drill this one first, Thomas. Okay. Now, there's a couple of ways you can drill that one and a couple of drill bits on the market. One, you can drill with a regular bit or a three-quarter inch or one-inch bit hole right up in here uh, after you've drawn a circle and take a keyhole saw. It's very difficult to do, and I wouldn't um, suggest it for an amateur especially. Rather, go to the hardware store and buy a rather inexpensive bit. This one's about $8. This one owes about 3 or $4. This is a hole saw. Um, and it's two and eight inches because that's the hole size required for the cylinder to fit in. Right. And you can only cut two and eight inch holes with this one. I suggest for home use, picking up one, that you can dial the actual blade size you want. In other words, yes, this has a lot of different gauges on here, I see. Exactly. So rather than have one that you can use one time and nothing else you can do with it, go ahead and get you one that you can adjust the sizes on it. Show us how you would adjust one of these. Okay. There's a bolt or nut right on the back and you'll simply take your pliers, loosen that bolt like that. You'll hold those for me, Thomas. Then you can take and move, turning, see there's two pieces here, two pieces of metal, two right. plates, and to adjust it, you turn the lower plate to whatever level you want. And there are indicators. And the bits expand. The bits expand or. and contract like that. And it's a little more difficult to get them out because you have to kind of work them. See, they expand and contract. Now, you want to place these bits when you're getting ready to set them, make sure the outside of the bits are what you're placing them to, right. to the mark, because that's going to be the maximum width of your hole. I don't know if we can pick it up or not, but uh, ingrained in here uh, are the settings with the grooves on here and the inch there marks. Here we go, that's a good shot. And it shows you the exact sizes. And right. the outside should be what you measure to. Exactly. So right. you want to go two, what, two and an eighth inches, Thomas. And it's broken into segments of two inches to two and a half, and then it has it broken down to half again. So two and an eighth be right there. Then you just tighten your bolt down. All right. Well, that looks simple enough. It's not a hard task at all, and you can use this on a lot of other jobs for 
for drilling different hole sizes. Right. Of course, the next thing you need is a drill. And if you don't have one, borrow one from your friendly neighbor. <laughs> but remember to return it. Yes. When you're Good. We're putting a bit in drill, always unplug it. Safety tip. Yes. Okay, open your chuck up to accept the bit. Place it in. Now, snug it down. And plug him back up. Okay. Now, what you'll need to do is drill this hole, and you'll just take your, there's a guide bit in here, and you'll just take that guide and place it in your pilot hole you've already started. Right. Now, you, this is a slow process in that you have to not put too much pressure, and you have to apply even pressure on your drill. Don't lean it or tilt it too much at one time. If you do, you'll break a blade. Uh-oh. Thomas, let's show them what to do. Next thing, you just turn your drill, start out pretty slowly, and just drill all the way through. Thomas, most of the time, if you'll note, these bits won't quite fit all the way through. Right. And did this one make it? Did no. this small pilot one make no, it? No, we yet? didn't make it. Okay. Well, we're going to try it again, folks. We've never what you'll do? <laughs> what you'll do is, I didn't know whether we were all the way through yet, and it started slipping. Okay. Let's see if we can. Okay, if that hole does not make it all the way through, it's a pretty simple process. Put in your nail. You're going to need a pilot on the other side. I'll need a hammer, Thomas. And uh, the hammer. Here it is. Got one. Got a surplus. Two. It was almost through. What you've got now is a guide on the other side, because this is a I knew I'd have to move the door again. Right. <laughs> rather wide door. Good. All right. And you know we've got a little pilot to go by, and you simply place your bit right back in that hole and start drilling from the side. Yes, sir. That's a home. Guaranteed, Thomas. <laughs> All right. Now, once you've gotten that hole done, you need to clean it out. And you're going to need to drill another hole on the other side. Now, we've already made the pilot hole on the edge. Exactly. Let me, let's turn the door again so that everybody at home can get you a see shot. see the drilling? And, uh, Here's our pilot hole that we made earlier, and of course we'll drill now through this uh, hole into the one that we just drilled into the base of it. So therefore we'll have uh, a hole here with the, with the exit hole here. This is where the dead bolt will go. Right. All now right? this particular dead bolt calls for a one inch hole in here right. to allow it to fit in. And therefore you're using a one inch bit. Exactly. Now, when you drill this in, be sure that your drill's not way up or way down. It has to be perpendicular to the face of this door. Okay. Have you got it? Right there.
And the bit slips. Slips again. And we'll now go into momentary pause while the bit is tightened. <laughs> Tension is heightened. Here we move right along. Just a little bit here so to uh, get a shot of it coming through. Okay. Okay. bit more, Thomas. Now, this is pretty typical of what you'll face when you put in a lock. It's going to slip sometimes, and the wood's pretty hard and thick, and you have to be patient and keep working. It is good to know that the door itself is sturdy, because oh, yeah. after all, you're after security. Yes, and this is a solid core door, so it's, or at least solid core <laughs> along this edge. Right. Thomas, the next part about this is your, the piece that uh, will actually the dead bolt the itself. The dead bolt itself. Let's turn this a little bit right here. We can get a better shot. There we go. That dead bolt will be fit up here, and you have to level this, and we have to mortise it or recess it. Right. Which isn't too bad of a deal. To do that, you'll need a couple of chisels. You need to hold that in place. Like that. Try to center it. And draw around it. Now this looks like it could be complicated to me to try to chisel this out. Oh, it's not too bad, Thomas. If you follow a few basic steps, um, use a fairly good sized chisel. Now, I'm going to hit a knee here while I do it. What you do is take the, the chisel and oh, the flat side should face the outside because that's the smooth edge you want. Right. Out there. And you want to recess it enough so that that piece will fit flush with the door. Now we're going to cross grain now, so it's going to be a little harder than when you go down. And when you go down, you have to remember that it could split. Okay, but that really doesn't matter, does it? Because that's what we're trying to get is right. to move. Okay, now we've got it loosened to the point where it'll be pretty easy to come right out. Right. Here's a little wider bit going up. Now this you don't have to hit as hard because it's going with the grain. And it's not as hard to get through it. That's right. You want to do it a little wider than the holes you've marked. This looks like an excellent weekend project or even an afternoon project. Yeah, it's not a bad deal, especially if it's an inside door where you got some time to deal with it. I've put on several in my house and uh, didn't take long to do it. Next thing you have to do, Thomas, is chisel this portion out. You can do that by taking your bit and placing it up in the hole and going up about the thickness is the other piece. Now you see we've already cut around, so right. the pieces ought to come out fairly easily. You'll need to do the same thing on the downward motion, about the same depth. See how easily they'll come out? Yeah, that was pretty good. I like the way it was outlined. It looks very neat. Okay, you need to clean out your extreme your rough edges. Now, oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Good. You may have okay. to note, you may need a pocket knife or something to um, get your pieces cleaned out pretty good. Try 
trusty hog peel. Okay. Now, probably that size not quite deep enough, but non under normal circumstances, what you would do is continue to chisel until you had this hole deep enough to receive this this thing into it, so that it would not protrude past the door itself. Right. Well, it's fairly close. Okay. Thomas, the next step in this thing is to bolt, to mount this actually to the door. Okay. And we're doing this before we put on the, the key. Okay. Pretty simple. And I'm going to pull out my trusty drill. Jordy's favorite too. Right. Now, if you need, some people would go ahead and put pilot holes in here with a finishing nail or something so that these would go in. And I probably should too, but we're going to give it a try here. Now, don't tighten them down too tight until you got both of them in and about the same distance. That bit wants to slip a little, Thomas. Trusty screwdriver. Yep. Okay. okay. I'll tell you what, this is about the hardest wood I've ever seen on a door. I think this one is really going to be secure when we get it through. I guarantee it won't go anywhere. Okay. And chances are, when you at home try this, the, door, the wood will be just about that hard as well. Oh, yes. Now, these would have been a lot easier. By the way, if you want to get the, the screws to go in a lot faster, you can drive a, drill a pilot hole or drive it with a finishing nail and then put some uh, liquid detergent on the edges of these and the screws will slip right in. Liquid detergent or butter or whatever. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> Good, okay. <laughs> oh, right. some, some type of margarine or something. It'll, whatever it takes. The next step in the process is to place your, your pieces into the bolt itself. Now, these have little grooves that, that fit into it and if you'll note, this one has a place for screws. Okay. And of course that would go on the inside of your door. Because you don't want somebody on the outside taking your lock off. Exactly. Right. Let's assume that this is the inside. Okay. Now you take this and there's a place in there for the for these little grooves. And there's a little nipple right here on the metal. Right. And that has to conform to the shape inside the lock. So you turn it, slide it in place. Okay. okay. Thomas, would you hold that right there for yes, me? Yes, sir. Now you have to do the same thing on the other side, and there's no need in turning it around, but you have to line these holes up with the bolt, the holes that are made for it in this bolt. Right. Slide it in place. And we are sliding it in Sliding in place, Thomas. Ah, oh, see. This one needs to go up, and this one needs to go down. Okay. okay. Now, once you've lined it up like that, you'll need to take your key. And open the places so you can get the screws in there. Right. Now when they're locked, they cover up, right? Exactly. And that's so that if someone breaks a the glass, they can't just take a screwdriver and get to the screws. So a safety feature on top of a safety feature. Exactly, Thomas. Now, all you'll do is simply screw these screws right down into place. I love it. I can't believe they've got a little cover that comes over that. That's, mm, that's pretty good, doesn't it? Yes. And you screw nice and firm. Don't screw that one all the way down until you've got the other one in place. So as not to knock them out of alignment. Exactly. See what a nice fit, nice job it does of covering the hole and how good it looks. Looks really neat. And the hardest part is drilling a hole. <laughs> yes. It's not too bad. Or keeping the bed in the drill, but other than that. Okay. You snug those down. And Thomas, the next thing, of course, you just try your, your key if you want to turn that. Right. And it fits right into the receiver. Right. Now, the next step, pretty much, and we won't go through the whole process, but you have what's called a keeper, Thomas. 
It's this piece right here. And if your door jam were here, this bolt would actually be like that. It would actually slide. If you'll turn that so they can see it. Right. It would actually slide into the jam if there was a hole there. Right. So what you do next, of course, is drill your hole here and then put your keeper right over your hole. Right. Now, if you have trouble identifying where to drill the hole, you simply put the old chalk or graphite right on this, the bolt itself, right I'll on the tip of it. Right. Shut your door firmly as it would normally be, and then take your key, and if you'll turn it, and you bump it, bump the key, bump the bolt itself against the jam. Right. And then take it back, open your door, and you can tell where to drill the hole. Right. Then you drill your hole, and again, you're going to have to mortise out for the keeper. Mortise it out. And once you've got it in place, this should slide in like that. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So it's pretty easy once you get down to it. Well, I and think the, uh, the biggest thing is making up your mind to do it and uh, to go ahead and jump out with the, uh, with the little template there and uh, be brave and go ahead and drill a hole in the door. To me, that's the, that's the weirdest that worries thing. You know, you. It worries you a lot about, uh, <laughs> gosh, uh, should I drill a hole in the door here or there or wherever? Once you've made up your mind, though, it's pretty easy. Now, the, the only tip that I would give somebody is, of course, this is excellent for keeping someone out. Right. It's also excellent for keeping you in <laughs> if you lose the key and, and this is locked. Cause, and There's no way for you to get out through that. So make sure you keep a key near the door not in arm's reach if they can break a window. Right. But keep it somewhere that you know that it's accessible and that you can get to it in case of fire. Also, a good idea and a mistake that a lot of people have made, though, is to put, keep the key in the lock. Well, then it's just the same thing as having the thumb uh, exactly. screw type, type that can be broken out and uh, the robber can uh, just merely reach in there and cut it off himself, uh, open it himself. Do not keep the key in the lock, as Jordy said. Put exactly. it somewhere else. Thomas, the one thing that they've shown is that you might think that you can hear a broken window, but you can't. They've shown that most of the robberies that occur when people are at home, they broke a window and the people never heard it. Well, there's one thing we want to impress upon you, that you can do an awful lot to secure your own safety in the home. And George has just showed us that you can fix it. See you again next time when we have another project on You Can Fix It. This is Thomas Dabbs for Jordan Johnson. See you next time.